Hello, Steve White, Trickway 89 for Steve Arts 89. It's 7 a.m. in Australia. I have been up all night. I have not been to bed. So, of course, both the Obi Wan trailer and the Strange New Worlds trailers drop pretty much the same time, and I just saw them. Um, so, Strange New Worlds, a goosebumps, hope. Um, it looks good. It is a trailer, though. Um, it starts off um, in Mojave or whatever um, the name of Chris's hometown was, um, which we think of as a desert in Arizona, but it's basically um, winter scenes, and he's riding around on a horse, and there is a shuttle coming to get in, There's, his communicator is beeping, he's ignoring it, he's got a beard, he looks like he's really not wanting to go back into space, um, looks like he wants to stay home, but um, someone is saying, Chris, I need you back here, um, I need you basically, we need you back, so he gets his basically having to be dragged back into Starfleet. Um, so at what point this is going to take place, I'm not sure, is going to be after the events of um, Discovery Season 2, where we saw him happily going off on an adventure, and or is it going to be earlier? Like we, I'm not exactly sure when the time frame is. I thought it was about a year after Discovery Season 2. But um, we don't see a lot. We see a couple of alien locales. We see a very cloudy planet. We see a big fiery smoke cloud above a planet. We see a very warm yellow sunset on an alien planet that kind of looks a little bit like Klingon architecture, but not really, so it's probably just, you know, some alien architecture. Um, we see what looks... Uh, first thing I thought of was like Indian. I thought it was like some sort of um, on Earth, like an Indian party or something, as a child and... Um, we see a child holding a uh, cutout of the Enterprise, and then the Enterprise it turns into the Enterprise going into space, and then we see a shot of um, a window on the ship looking out into space, and we see Pike looking up, looking down into through the window into the ship of him just sitting there, and he, standing there, and he walks off. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, there is a voiceover. Basically saying no matter how many times we look at the stars and the galaxies and no matter the amount of mathematical equations and the amount of times we say we're not alone in the universe, um, our first visit from the stars is always the province of children and science fiction until it's not, until it isn't. And um, that's basically when the, um, the little cutout turns into the real ship. And it looks good. Um, and then we have the, the old... Star Trek music swell up, and at the very, very end they have a tiny little bit of um, that Zephyr or whatever from um, Forbidden Planet, just the very, very end, the last couple of seconds when Paramount Plus comes on, which I was a bit suspicious of. Is that some sort of general thing they're putting on all their science fiction stuff, to, or, or is that just something coming with this, and are they going to do a bit of a throwback to the 50s and 60s science fiction in this, and a bit of a nod to that? Um, I read a lot into that second and a half of... Um, um, not Ziffer, Xylophone, what is that? That There's that, um, you know, I'm not going to try and do it, but you know that, that, that old science fiction music from, I think it started in Forbidden Planet. Um, yeah, so, um, it looked good. I'm, I'm trying not to get too excited because I've been burned twice. I was really excited for Discovery. I thought it was going to be a normal science, Star Trek science fiction series disappointed. I thought Picard was going to be the um, antidote to Discovery and, you know, uh, uh, set in, you know, the post-Nemesis sort of world, new Star Trek show just continuing on from Voyager and it wasn't. This is supposed to be, um, you know, the, a prequel like Discovery to the original Star Trek set in that era, you know, boldly going, new adventures, one-off adventures, um, episodic, you know, shows, um, will it disappoint? I don't know, like, I don't know what they would get out of doing that again. They've got to give us what we want at some point, otherwise we're not going to keep coming back. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Cynical people are going to say, of course not. People like me are going to hope that actually we get something out of this. Um, it looks like he's basically, he's left and he's being brought back and being reminded of why he wants to be there, why he wanted to be there in the first place. That's what it looks like to me, and that looks like 
we're going to get a story now. The only part I didn't mention was they did show the shots we've already seen of the crew beaming down onto a sort of grey, sort of windy planet. They're in um, EVA suits and they just go into like a building. It feels very alien um, at the start of Alien, but um, that's the only other thing in the preview. That's pretty much everything. Um, I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. I just want this to be good. I just need one Star Trek show that's good. If they want to do different shows in different periods and different eras for different audiences, I'm fine. So long as one of them resembles Star Trek, I can live with it. But I need something. Throw me a bone, Paramount. Please. I'm going to go.